Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Making Moves. I'm here today with the lovely Brooke Schofield. Woo well, Brooke, how are you? What are you doing right now in your life? What are you doing to make moves? Okay, good question. <laughs> you know, I didn't even think about that beforehand, like coming on here, that I was going to have to talk about the moves that I'm making. Oh, um, I like it because you're a little caught off guard. It's like I, you have um, to go with your gut. Although I I will say I'm doing a little better now than maybe if you asked me like six months ago. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I'm just like, my. I think I talked to you about this the other night. I'm yeah. like, my whole thing right now is like trying to go out and do absolutely everything, like say no to nothing. That makes You're sense. being a yes man. Yeah, so I'm trying to go out every single day to every single event that I can possibly go to, show face, mm-hmm. and hopefully make more money, God. I'm like, <laughs> literally, I I just got out of a relationship, obviously, and that whole entire time, I like wasn't making any moves at all. And that's um, so fun. <laughs> well, which is fine, but I was like, I just was so comfortable, and I was like not really doing anything as far as work, so now I'm like, okay, I have to. Yeah. You're in your girl boss era. on top of it. And I'm with new management now. So now I'm like finally like feeling comfortable with the whole yeah. social media stuff like only. And so those are the moves I'm trying to make. Congrats. <laughs> That's awesome. That's huge getting new management. It is. Well, I, w- I didn't have any management before. Oh, so wow. I talked about this a little bit on Plan Bree, but like I was like solo and I had no idea what I was doing. Like, I mean, how could you? you you don't it's and it's crazy. like yeah. you get all these emails but it's like I don't know what to say to you and mm-hmm. like it was just really hard for me so honestly I like probably missed out on a lot of opportunities that I probably could have like benefited from a lot but I was like I just was going in blind had no idea so now that I have a team to help me I feel like it's easier for me to get stuff done yeah I love it so you're from um Arizona correct? I am okay tell me a little bit about how you grew up um I grew up with my grandparents mm-hmm um and they were amazing I well I, originally I was with my parents um up until I was like 10 years old and then I got adopted my, by my grandparents oh, when you got I was fully 10. adopted by your grandparents I did but what's interesting about it I lived with them from the time I was 10 until you know I went to now. college yeah, or whatever <laughs> yeah but I wasn't adopted until I was 19 and I got adopted in what's called like an adult adoption whoa and it was so strange but we had to like go to court and do the whole adoption process but like as an adult oh my god and n- i mean normally i wouldn't have even gone through it but it was for like college i got um my grandpa was a veteran and he was like a dis- uh, like a disabled veteran oh so i got his benefits um as so long as i was his child wow yeah and so it was amazing and i ended up being able to go to college full ride well thank you to your grandpa for his I service i know thank god and he was for, amazing you know yeah that's amazing um okay where'd you go to college U of A. U of A. I went to U of A. I was a nursing student. Well, no, I wasn't. I just made that up. (laughs) I was just made up a major. I was pre-nursing, but I never did like professional admissions to the nursing program. So Mm -hmm. it ended up just being like a public health situation. I did three and a half years and then I took a little hiatus that's still happening. Still happening. (laughs) Okay. Why did you take the hiatus? Um, I had like I don't know. I, I like a full Emma Stone moment where I was like, I have to make a PowerPoint, convince my family that I am going to be like my life is so much bigger than what is here. I literally thought I was going to be like Jennifer Lawrence. I was like, I'm going to move to L.A. I mean, I'm going to have that confidence. <laughs> no, I, did. I just was so convinced. I was like, I have to be in movies like that's what I have to do. Got here, stayed here for three years, didn't do one acting job at all. And then that's kind of normal, fell in. Though. I know. But yeah, but, but here's yeah. the thing. It's normal. However, like. People talk about like the whole like struggling actor and stuff. It's like auditioning, auditioning, auditioning and not getting anything. I was not auditioning. (laughs) Like I wasn't, I didn't, I literally probably went to like four auditions total. Yeah. And I was not trying at all. And I'm like, I don't understand why I'm not making it. And were you working while you were? I was. Okay, was this your catch era or yes, before? Yes, this was. That's actually the only job I've had since I've been here. Okay, catch. I worked there for three years almost. Catch LA, like the okay. Yeah. Wow, what a crazy story. Well, I want to go back. What was it like growing up with your grandparents? It was amazing. They were like, they're just the sweetest, most like angelic people ever. Um, my grandma and grandpa have been together since they were thirteen years old. Stop. Literally, like they were neighbors. Like grew up together and then you know he joined the army they got married at 19 and they've been together since oh my gosh and so it was like they're just the sweetest like perfect couple um my grandma ended up getting like 
really bad dementia when she well, probably when I was like maybe 15, 16. Okay. And it's just like kind of pro- progressively gotten worse, but it's like it's sad and it's horrible obviously like anyone who goes through that like it's that's horrible it's like so hard anything I, anything so hard to me it can be like worse honestly than like losing a family member because it's like they're there but they're not not there. yeah but it's like still kind of not cute but like my grandpa is so he just like takes care of her he, like he's the sweetest husband ever and he's like she would do it for me you know he, oh. he paints her nails he puts her Stop. hair up every day like he is the sweetest like He's just yassifying most, her. Most patient. He is. <laughs> he is. He's just so patient. And like, you know, like he's like, obviously I didn't think this is how my life would end up. Wow. But it's really cute. So that's been like a, it, it was very like refreshing and a stark contrast to what I ha- was used to, which was my parents who were n- certainly not a healthy couple or the healthy people. <laughs> okay. Amazing. And you, I just, that, I think that's so amazing about your grandparents, how they like, met at 13 and it is still i can't together. imagine can you imagine like do you have no. anyone that you knew i don't even know anyone that well, i knew I when just, i was 13 i was <laughs> i do know people i knew i was at th- or at 13 like one of my best friends still i knew forever but like i can't think of anyone in my life that is dating someone that they met when they were 13 I and just, i hear that in parents they're like oh we met when we were 15 and then we got married and we're still married, right? I've, I hear that sometimes with my friend's parents or like every once in a while. But I do not think our generation that will happen. I don't think it's po- – I think it's so different now because I feel like I, – I don't know. Back then it was like they didn't have access to social media and stuff. So it's like I, I don't think they really even knew how many people were out there. And like maybe yes. that's a good thing because it's like they're, they were able worse. to like keep these healthy relationships. Whereas now there's just so many outside mm-hmm. like – like contributing factors but like I would die if I had to choose from like only the people I knew I know. as a teenager I would I'd rather just, just not be married yeah well the thing is is I feel like I noticed that in myself with let me know if you agree with dating apps uh, I'll keep like swiping just to see if there's someone better yeah but I I just made a TikTok about this the other day do you fear like I I've been in love a couple times and both of those people, I know for a fact I would say no to on a dating app. So, like, yes, I'm like, yes! Ah, what if, like, and I loved those people both so much. Like, and, yes! I, and I couldn't imagine, like, having not been with them. But, like, I would have never chosen them if I were, if I were just, like, swiping through Hinge, uh-huh. like, ever. Oh, yeah. So I'm worried constantly, like, what if that was my husband and I just thought he was ugly? Like, I'm also, like, does my Hinge, like, I've had people look at my Hinge and they're like, oh, yeah, those are good photos. But I'm like, that doesn't even fully like portray me yeah well like it can't and it's like you can't doing it yourself too it's like you might think one thing about a a photo or like an answer that you give and other people might be like what like yeah also especially with what we do oh my god I get nervous because like if I for example were to swipe on somebody and he was a social media personality I'd be like ew yeah same 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 (laughs) and like that's literally what we do like how Mm -hmm. I can't imagine what they think when they see us, but I'm like, no, but seriously, like, it's not even me. Yeah, that's literally, like, not even my job. It's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. Do, do you have success on dating apps? Um, I feel like I'll match and then I'll dabble. Like, it'll be, like, a few will say, I'll say one, or they'll say one thing, and then I'll say another thing, and then they'll say one thing, and then I'll say something, and then nothing happens. It's just, like, have you I ever met like, up with somebody from a dating app? Yeah. You have? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I've done Several a, times. I've done a couple. I've done only one good experience I've ever had, and then he goes to me. So I'm like, and he was really the one that got away, too. I'm like watching him be so successful. I'm like, oh, this really? is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. See, I feel like all my dating app d- dates, well, that's a lie. I haven't been on several. I've been on a handful. Okay. And uh, I feel like every time I'm just like, Nah. Or actually, there's a few that I was like, oh, my God, we talked after and like maybe planned a second date or they were I thought they were hot. But there was like most of the time I usually go and then I'm like, oh, I should have just stayed home and watched Housewives. Yeah, I agree with that. But free dinner, at least. Yeah, I guess. But I'm like, oh, I could have bought myself free dinner like at home in bed. I just don't like a fir- like a first time conversation usually. And like to have to do it over and over and over again. I'm like, mm-hmm. geez, I'd almost rather like and I do prefer always to like take a rela- a relationship from what was a friendship already like yes. someone who I already know and I'm kind of like comfortable being around and then I'll go on a date and it's like whatever yeah but like so for the first time like what do you do I'm like 
again. I'm like, oh god, <laughs> like, it's you don't want to know. Awkward. It, uh, I want to like get better at it though because I feel like I need to try harder on dating apps and I need to like have it a part of my routine like going on a date once a week it's just like part of my that routine was like my, going to the gym. that's my new year's resolution it is mine it, too. not not once a week but i think once every 2 weeks is realistic yeah that's su- and super and especially realistic. like i want to make it the, oh god this is going to scare people but like i would love to make it like a sex or a segment on a podcast like this is what the date was this yes. week. This is how it went. Like, that's exactly. I want to like vlog getting ready. Yeah, because like, I'm trying to put myself out there. Because no, people are successful on dating apps. So many oh gosh, people. People are, are getting married. Hinge. Yeah. Yes. They're, and so I'm like, I, I want to be like that. I know. And I everyone's know. on them now. It's not like a weird thing. It's not eHarmony. I know. No offense. Maybe we can, <laughs> maybe we can plan a day that we both go on a date. So then we're just like doing it at the same time Absolutely, together. Absolutely. And I'll feel better about it. Yes. I always have to have someone doing something with me, like working out or anything to make me feel like I'm, I should be doing that. Exactly. It'll hold us accountable. Back to the grandparents. I feel oh. like <laughs> that is so rare and special. And that's so sweet of your grandpa. It is. Just and I really feel cool. like it's it's good for me, too, because I feel like a lot of people don't have like positive relationships to look up to. So that's been like mm-hmm. really cool for me. How to see. often do you see your grandparents now? Um, Not often. As horrible as it is, it's like kind of sad for me to go home. So it's like I don't tr- I try not to as much because mm-hmm. it's like I'd rather just like remember what <laughs> it was like when I left. But I just saw them for Christmas and it was great. That's sweet. But not yeah. not as often as I should. I call, but. Oh, that's sweet. I don't go down there as much. And they don't. They moved since I've graduated and, you know, gone off and done my own thing. So I go home and it's not like my home. Yeah. So it doesn't like it just doesn't feel right going home. Mm -hmm. And they have their own little life and you have your own little life. They do. And they Mm -hmm. just have their little routine and it's cute. Adorable. Okay, so you are a podcaster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I kind kind of, not recently. Um, but you're hopefully going to come out with a podcast. Soon. Yes. So right, how are you allowed to talk about this? Like give us the 411. Tan Tell and me I about have podcasting. Yeah, so Tan and I have talked about how canceled is coming back. We said in January. Um it is mid-January now and it ha- is not back. So maybe I should stop um giving dates, but it will be back as soon as we can have it back. And then I've also been talking well We've signed a contract, Becca and I. Becca Moore, she's a TikToker. Love I don't her. Know. Yes, love her. Mm-hmm. Um, she and I are doing one together as well. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna go from zero podcasts to two podcasts, Which probably will be so around fun. the same time. So I'm really excited about that. I think they'll be different enough though, because they're very different person, very different personalities. Uh huh. How are they different? Um, I I don't know. Becca's very like dry, very like satirical like humor she's so funny and Tana's so funny too but Tana's like outwardly Uh really like out of pocket very crude and she's funny in a different way than Becca is and I feel like our topics would be very different Tana and I are like talk a lot about our like personal lives and like like things that Becca and I don't think would talk about since we're not as like Becca and I weren't friends before. We literally, yeah. I reached out to her before I had ever met her in person. And I was like, you're so funny. And at that time, I was like wanting to do a Barstool podcast. So I was like, I need a co-host. But then we retired that idea and we were like, that's Let's okay. Everyone anyway. for a reason. I think so too. <laughs> I feel like you got into this podcasting slash influencer, we'll say the word, world relatively not too long ago not right? at all okay it was like at the start of the canceled podcast really i wasn't really, really doing social media before okay that. can you explain to me like that process because you were working at catch how'd you work from how'd you start from working at catch to like being on this like hit podcast well i i'd been friends with tana for a really long time but just kind of like I mean, I wasn't on social media, so like people didn't really like know me at all. And I wasn't I was posting TikToks like just to be funny, but I wasn't like taking it seriously or making money from mm-hmm. it at all. And I didn't make money from it even until long after the canceled podcast was already out. So um when I got fired from catch, I Wait, why did you get <laughs> fired from catch? He's a long story. <laughs> I'm like, wait, I'll tell you. But basically when I did get fired from catch, I was at Tana's house. And so I was I loved that job. I literally like lived and breathed that, that job. I worked. Were there you six a waitress? Days. I was a I was the maitre d. So like essentially a hostess. Okay, hostess. But um, Catch would have like their fancy. Well, the yeah. maitre d is like in charge of the hostess. Oh, and they, okay. Like, yeah. So, but it's like I was. So a hostess. you were the head honcho. At I was. Catch. I was a hostess. <laughs> okay. 
But I loved it. And I worked there six days a week and I took it so seriously. And it was my favorite job ever. I loved it. So when I got fired, I was like, it was like traumatic. Did you see so many celebs going there all the time? So it was it was a fun job. Like you would go in, you would have no idea if like Justin Bieber was going to come in. It was just like a really cool. Who were like the most regular people at Koch? I need to know. Um, Jamie Foxx is like would come in like literally every night. That makes sense. We had like... a lot of um, like David Spade, who I think is the funniest guy ever. Um, I don't know. Just like Justin Bieber would come. Not often, actually, but. We're, I feel like it's now such like an influencer hotspot. Do you feel like a lot of A-listers still go there? Kind of. I feel like that will never die, but we now have like they have catch steak and stuff yeah. now that's like kind of taking over. And I feel like there's new places that are like the new catch. The catch menu is it's I, so I good. I still that. love it. But, so good. But yeah, so I got fired from there. It was really traumatic. And so when I, when I got fired, I was at Tana's and I like, uh-huh. I don't think I left for like six weeks straight. I was like so depressed and I was like, what do I do? No. And that's when I kind of like became really close with everyone because prior to that, I'd been working six days a week. I'd been friends with them, bee. but I wasn't. I wasn't over there all the time. So then I got really close with everybody and that's kind of how I started like getting into it. But then it wasn't until probably like a year later that we started canceled. And I didn't know. Tana didn't have any idea who she was going to have as her co-hosts. But the day of the first episode, she called me and she's like, hey, can you get ready really quick? Wait, no way. Yeah. So she was going to do this podcast and then she was like the day of she was recording. Yeah. The day that she was going to record. She called. out. Yeah. And so and I had no idea even then that I was going to be a co-host. I thought I was going to be on the first episode. And so I did the first episode and then we went to dinner after that. And she was like, I'm so happy you guys are my co-hosts. Wait, what? Yeah. And me and Hunter were like. Wait, what? <laughs> like, wait, are we? Like, really? And she never told us. And so then after that, I was just. This is so LA. I feel like when you live here, shit just happens. It does. And, and you're in the right place, right time. I'm so happy that it happened Boom. that way, too, because I would have been so nervous. Like, had she asked me to do it, I mm-hmm. probably would have found some reason, like, why I shouldn't. Mm. Just because I would have been like, that's so scary. Yeah. Like, and I don't know. For the first, like, few episodes, too, everyone was cooking me. They were like, shh. Get that girl off of there. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. And so I'm glad she kind of like blindsided me with it because I probably wouldn't have done it otherwise. But it's the greatest thing I ever did. Because then it was after that that I started being able to do social media Mm -hmm. and actually like make money from it because I don't know. I kind of made a joke to you the other night about how it's like like I'm not a nepotism kid, but she like (laughs) (laughs) like Tana kind of like put me on. And I don't think that I ever would have been able to do it if she didn't. So, well, that's so awesome. I feel like your relationship with her. She one thing that I admire about her from afar is it seems like she really takes care of the people she's around. She does. She's the best and at is that. a good friend. She's not yeah. like handing things to anybody. Like obviously you don't yeah. you don't just get followers or mm-hmm. money or whatever from being her friend, but she's like she'll give everyone every opportunity like to make money or do something or like Which is game. so kind. It is. It really is. And she doesn't have to do that. And most at people all. don't. Actually. A lot of people don't. Yeah. And a lot of people are like competitive kind of with the people around her. She's not that way at all. Wow. She's like, you should be doing this and like you should do this or make this video and like it'll do so well. Like she's very, very good about that. I stuff. love that. Do you obviously you've been like working alongside with her and just been her friend for such a long time. What do you feel like you've learned from her other than obviously helping others, putting people on? She's just so good. I don't know if I've learned it from her because I don't think that I can like copy it in any way, but she's so good at like being viral. Like she knows exactly, exactly what to do, what to say, like how to word things to like make it as like controversial kind of as possible. Mm. And that's how she like, you know, stays in the game and like. She if she like she sees an opportunity, someone's blowing up or someone's doing something, she will like fly to another state to like make a video with that person. She's just very like on it and she knows how to stay relevant. Whereas uh-huh. I'm like scared of like I'm like just trying not to get like canceled or anything. <laughs> I feel like that's so interesting <laughs> to me from my perspective about you because I'm I feel like you're so good at being an open book. I'm very like I don't have anything that I'm afraid to talk about like Regarding uh, yourself. Regarding myself. Same. But I get really afraid, which Tana definitely doesn't, talking about like celebrities or like or other it. people because super fair. That just scares me. Yeah. I'm afraid of like I get afraid upsetting I'm gonna, like, people. Yeah, or I'm afraid I'm gonna say what I think and then I'm gonna meet them and then it's gonna be awkward oh, and it's then they're terrifying. different than what I thought. I wondered that about her. Like, does she not is she not afraid to go outside? Like we were just 
we were at People's Choice. Yes, recently. I saw you guys there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was, we ran into Khloe Kardashian and Ch- Tana has run her mouth about Khloe oh, Kardashian. Really? And I'm like, I'm sitting there like, I'm like, are you scared? <laughs> Like, I would be terrified. Was she scared or was she no. doesn't mind? I think she just doesn't, like, she has, like, the, the the world's greatest gift, okay? And it's that she doesn't have anxiety. Wow. At all. Like, nothing makes her anxious. Nothing makes her, like, she doesn't wake up the next day after, like, being blacked out and, like, think, like, oh, my God, what did I do ever? Uh-huh. And I'm like, what a privilege. <laughs> so I think she can yeah. say anything, do anything, and she's just like, oh, well. Wow. I mean, there's – it makes sense why she's so Yeah, you don't successful. get to her level of success without having something like that. Like, yeah. The Logan Pauls, the Jake Pauls of the world, like, they kind of have to have I mean, that. good for her. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, I feel like she – the – confidence she has when say talking specifically about other celebrities that's when I get a little nervous yeah especially if it's not positive and I'm scared like I get scared like commenting on anything I made a TikTok about Addison Ray's like boyfriend this morning and I was like Addison like what if she sees it like this is embarrassing but well like, and the most people most likely will see it they will yeah they will and she follows me too so I was like I don't know why I did that but it does like I try to I try to make like nice videos about people sometimes yeah. so then I'm like maybe they'll like like <laughs> they'll love it <laughs> yeah exactly okay so you just got out of a crazy relationship I did that, what is what was that like what did you learn from that um I learned that I'm probably not mentally stable enough to be in a relationship <laughs> okay <laughs> honest to god I think that's like my big takeaway from it because it wasn't like it wasn't a horrible relationship at all in fact it was like I loved it and it was the greatest but I was like like I kind of talked about this at the beginning I stopped working like all together it was kind of like we got into this relationship immediately after canceled ended and so I didn't even really have time to be upset about that because that was like at that time I had like a lot of momentum I felt like I was doing a lot of things getting a lot of like brand deals and whatever it was because of you're having momentum Yeah. yeah and so when it ended it just all kind of abruptly stopped and like that would have probably really upset me had I not immediately gotten into this relationship okay so that was a good distraction and I immediately just kind of like adopted his life and like what was he doing and like how can we make him more successful and like that was kind of my whole angle and it was a good distraction and it kept me like completely distracted from the whole canceled situation but then when it ends you're like oh my god like what did I do for the last six months like I didn't I barely worked I didn't like progress my career at all and it made me it was like I added to the like sadness of the breakup because I was like well shit now I have nothing to fall back on I yeah. didn't I didn't even work yeah so well, that's a great I feel like that's a great lesson for girls about dating because a lot of people think a successful relationship is like oh we're obsessed with each other and yeah. like we're doing all these cool things but like you still need to be successful whether that's making money or going to the gym or what, whatever it is it, in your own way. Like you need to have your own life. Yeah. And, and I be did successful not as an individual know that. for a partnership to really work. So then you can build on top of each other. Right. But this was my that's first so common. Yeah. My first relate like for, first real relationship. So I like, I really didn't know what was normal and what wasn't. Mm-hmm. So and I thought you're in love. You're like, yeah, oh and I, I, I was, I was, and yeah. I was just so obsessed with like him and everything he was doing That's and, exci- and excited for him and his successes and stuff that I like was, it didn't matter. I was mm-hmm. like, whatever, like perfect. We'll go do what he does. But I admire couples. Like I have certain couples that I look at now that I'm like, God, like that's amazing that like they're both so successful in their individual things. And like, I won't make that mistake again. That's what I, that's what I learned from it is mm-hmm. that I can't, adopt somebody else's life because mm-hmm. what are you going to have when they leave you? Yeah, nothing. exactly. Nothing. I, um, my mom always said, and my mom's mom's friends that even when you get married to always have an additional separate bank account, that's your own. It's, you just, you just never know which it's shit's going to hit the fan. Terrifying. Like I, I know better now, but so many people I like, I see kind of in the same situations and I'm like, God, like that's, are you not scared? Mm-hmm. And you just never you never think it'll happen to you or mm-hmm. you'll you'll be in that situation. But it's always good to have that separate, first of all, separate interests, separate things, separate lives and separate hobbies, but also a separate bank account. Absolutely. Because you just never know. You really don't. Exactly. So now you're in you guys broke up. When did you break up? We broke up um, in October. 
Okay. And now you're in your go- saying yes to everything. Why are you saying yes to everything? Because I said no to everything for so long. I felt like, oh, and it okay. wasn't, it wasn't like a result. It, it, he had nothing to do with it. It was like, I was so obsessed with him and hit like, I only wanted to be with him that I never wanted to be around my friends. I never wanted to go to events. I never wanted to like go on vacation or go anywhere that he wasn't. And that was my fault. But like, <laughs> Now that it's over, I'm like, God, I could have been doing all these amazing things mm-hmm. and I probably could have been a lot further along than I am. And that upset me a lot. So now my thing is like, don't say no to anything. OK, so going to everything. And what do you feel like your strategy is when you're going out? Are you just like trying to have fun or mingle or make connections? Just meet people like I I just I had I have like really good friends and stuff, but I haven't made new friends I felt like in so long. I, I'm constantly around the same people and doing the mm-hmm. same things. So I've been trying to go like, even if I go alone, just to like be around people and see people and like. Get out of your bubble. Yeah. I'm exactly. trying to do that too. Really, like I am. And I, I've been so far successful. I feel like I'm meeting a lot of really like great people and good like people, a lot of people who aren't in the influencer space too, which makes me excited because I'm like, I don't have world. a lot of friends like yeah, that. And that well is like very valuable, honestly. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that's that's the goal. There's so many people. I feel like I look at you and I'm like, you're so good at making friends. I try, I lo- but, but I'm not good at following through. Like, oh, really? What do you mean? I don't have like... Like making a plan after you meet? Yeah, like I don't have really like social anxiety or anything like that, but like... I am so comfortable with the friends that I have that it's like if the choice is between going to dinner with like my best friend and going to dinner with someone new, I probably will choose my best friend. But I'm trying to be better about that because it's like, what if that's my, that's another best friend. Do you have like a approach? Because in from my perspective, you just seem like a social butterfly. No. Um, <laughs> and so do you, when you're meeting new people, let's say you, you know, see someone from afar, like you've watched their shit or you're a you have friends of friends and you want to meet them. What is going through your brain when you're like want to go up and introduce yourself? I don't know. I feel like a lot of people struggle with social anxiety. A lot of viewers are like you're scared to network or whatever, or meet new people. And you seem like such a natural. I don't feel like I'm a natural. But honestly, but I do feel you have like any tips in for that people? situation. Usually I would like if we do have a mutual friend, I'd be like, oh, my God, I love this person. Like introduce me or I will literally tell the person that I like. I'll be like, oh my god, I love your videos. Like, yes, I love. I'm not. That I'm too. definitely not afraid to say that. I feel like a lot of people are for some reason. I'll no, be like, it's much I'm more the, your comforting. biggest fan. <laughs> it's much more comforting. I would say from both perspectives, like the person that's being told. I would rather someone act say that they watch my stuff instead of act like they don't, because that's weird. Me too. And I have so many friends who do that. Or like, I have a, a good friend of mine who will go up to people that I know she knows, and she'll be like, "Hi, what's your name?" And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, girl, like, be so real, like." I like it's scary, but it's just better to be like, by the way, I love your stuff because they're going to figure out along the way. Like, I know you can tell I know when somebody comes up to me and they're pretending not to. And then they'll say something where I'm like, you watch the podcast or like something like that. And I know I would so much rather you tell me because I feel more comfortable around you immediately if I feel like, you know, and it's fair because I get that it's awkward. Me too. But it's not it's not embarrassing. Like, I do not. Yeah, we need to normalize being a fangirl. I had a friend one time. I'm not kidding. We were at this like random like bar opening and she she goes up to Sean Mendez and <laughs> and, he, and she's like, what's your name? I'm like, bitch. <laughs> like, what do you mean? What's his name? Like, just say hi. Like, he's like. I'm Sean Mendes. <laughs> like, don't make him say it. Like, also, what do you say after someone says hi? I'm Sean Mendes. Like, what do you? Say? Are yeah, you like? What are you oh. gonna be like? Oh my god, never heard of him. <laughs> like, it's it's just not as embarrassing as you think oh it is. Like, tell god. someone you're a fan. Like, who cares? Okay, so that's kind of your strategy. Is oh if yeah. You, if you've seen their shit, you're like, hi. Oh yeah, my god. for sure. I'm like, such a fan. Alex or... Earl the other night. I'm yeah. like, hey girl, like check out my light in my bag. Like, yeah, slay. Like, <laughs> love bought you. this from you. Got it. Okay, what if they're not a social media person and, like, someone that's watching, like, has normal people around them. They want to go up to them. They can't say, oh, I'm such a fan. (laughs) I feel like just same thing. Well, I'll just, like, compliment someone. Like, oh, my God, love your top. Or, like, I don't know. Honestly, I'm usually, like, drunk in these situations. Uh Uh-huh. So I feel like it just comes naturally to me because my my drunk personality is a major socialite. My normal one, maybe not so much. major (laughs) socialite. I will say... That is a good tip is just complimenting anything they're wearing. Yeah. Or like even 
more so than like the obvious, like a, an earring or like something. Yeah, something a, that a maybe nobody unique. wouldn't like. Yeah, you're not gonna compliment yeah. someone's white t shirt. Like, oh my god, but, that like, ring's so cool. Or like, yeah, exactly, your white t shirt. <laughs> my god, love that white t shirt. <laughs> totally, something a little that stands out. What's yours? What's your strategy? Um. Well, I feel like I don't use the having my friends introduce me enough. Like, I feel like I need to get more comfortable with asking my friends to be like, hey, can you introduce me to this person? Yeah. Like, well, I sometimes never... it feels like embarrassing Weird. Then, because then you're th- there's an additional person, like an outside source or outside party that's also watching the interaction and making feel... you feel more uncomfortable. <laughs> I feel like I've also had some bad experiences where I've asked that and then the person wasn't good at like making it. Oh, no. Like sly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it was like very like. This is your fan girl, like, and, and I'm like, oh, like I'm getting the ick. Like, I I need someone that has a little, they know the dance. Yeah, they're Does a little bit more sense? like natural like a about little, it. As a little more I swag. would be horrible at that. I will say, I'm self aware enough to really? know that I would not be a good mediator in that. That's situation. so funny. I feel like you would be good at it. I feel like I'm. I knock on wood, but I feel like I'm pretty good at introducing others. But when I don't, I I do say I do admit that I'm a fan most of the time. Especially if I am one, I'm like, oh my god, or, or you yeah. know, I've seen, blah blah blah, or I just saw this, or whatever. Um, I definitely think a compliment on anything could be good. Or sometimes I'll be like, hey, this is so random. I think we have a mutual friend. Oh yeah, for sure. And kind of use that strategy. I'll be like, this is so random and weird, but blah blah blah. So then it's like, when it's not that weird, it seems like way less weird. <laughs> You know, once you have like, I think expectations like ruin everything. So when you make the expectation like this is going to be so weird and then it's just like actually not, then they're like, oh, this girl's so normal. Yeah, like, perfect. I'm, if that makes any sense. Kind of. I just, I don't know. I feel like nobody's thinking about, like, I never think about what somebody said when they came up to me. I just am like, okay, well, they came up to me and now, now, now I know them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just went to that Summer Fridays event and I was, I'm doing dry January, so I was sober. Oh. And I was like, I could tell that I was a little more just like in my head with things than I typically am. And I'm not that type of person. Like I am a social butterfly, but I was like, damn, like I do kind of rely a little bit on some liquid courage, which I want to get better at. I know. I hate to admit that, but it's just true. Yeah. I think it's also like when you're in that everyone's a little tipsy environment it's like they're giving you the same energy you're giving but what you you can fall back on is that even if you're doing dry january odds are the person that you're talking to isn't so maybe like true. it takes the edge off whether whether it's from your end or not like they're that's true they're not thinking nearly as hard about yeah. it as you are so what you thought might have been a really awkward situation alexis said the same thing to me she's like oh my god i just had the most awkward encounter and i'm like Trust me, it like was it not wasn't awkward. That deep. It yeah. wasn't okay. that awkward. Did you notice, by the way, that Summer Fridays had like a whole mocktail list? I didn't. For a dry January. Oh, wow, that's brilliant. Isn't that hilarious? I should have done that. I'm, am I too late? <laughs> well, there is damp January. What the fuck is damp January? So instead of like you totally being dry, it's like, oh, I'm not drinking on the weekdays, but I'll drink on the weekends. Oh, that's which like is California what I do. sober or whatever. It's like, why don't we just... Call- like, I saw a TikTok where someone was like, why don't we just call it drinking? Like, yeah. like, <laughs> like, like what do you mean? Why does it have to be damp January? Yeah. Like. True. I will say I just saw a tweet. And have you ever heard of the workout 75 day hard? Yes. Which is absolutely bananas. Like it's crazy. Anyway, I saw a tweet and someone's doing they like made a list for their definition of 75 days soft. (laughs) And it's literally like the dumbed down version of it's still like genuinely like a good like healthy hard workout or lifestyle like the thing was like work out for an hour once a day instead of twice a day um and it was like only drink on the weekends and only drink bud light or miller light like it yeah, was or like vodka sodas like it was very just like okay choose the healthier it's a more option reasonable of things. yeah because like, 75 hard or is it whatever 75 it is. days hard 75 or hard whatever it is <laughs> Is it not a sustainable like I no, don't. No, that's not a lifestyle. I, that's, and that's no. the thing with anything that's like that. I'm like, okay, well, so you're gonna gain the weight back, except now you just lost 75 happy days of your life. <laughs> like you poor thing. <laughs> it's definitely like one of those cool because I do love a challenge, but it is extreme. Yeah, but I'm so not one of those people. Like I, you know, I don't need to prove anything to myself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not like the do the Iron Respect. Man so that you know you could do it. Like first of all, I know I couldn't do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> and honestly, I could sleep perfectly fine at night knowing that I haven't. Yeah. You know what? And I love that. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I used to be one of those people that I was like, I need to prove this to myself and other people because I grew up kind of in the sports like yeah, family. Our, and yeah. I have like a brother and like my dad's really into it. Too. So I like was like, oh, OK. But yeah. now I'm like, I, I don't there's not a hot guy here I need to impress. I don't need to go and die in the ocean right now. So or true. I am trying. Like I, I would love to get more. A little more active, though. I will say I'm not having I'm not okay in any condition that I want to be in right now. I tried to do like, first of all, I noticed the other day that my butt is like actually like it's like it just goes thigh to shoulder blade. Like <laughs> it's just gone. <laughs> and I don't know where she went. But like, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should go to like Pilates or something. I want to start Pilates, too. I would we love should to go. do it. We should go. People are doing and I like the one on the little forma machine. It, I'm making it sound like it's fun. It looks like it's fun. It does. I don't think it is. But it's hard. But it's like, I want to be a little Pilates girly and like take my mirror pics and like look cute. Yeah. And this is exactly the time we should start if we're trying to like, if we're thinking like March, April, when everything like really matters, you start putting on a bikini again. I'm like, we should start right now. No, I literally, the Coachella lineup just came out and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. What are your thoughts on it? (sighs) I... I know this is controversial. I'm not like that obsessed with it. I, oh, that's not controversial. People hate it. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm, people are like, this is the best lineup. At least in my yeah. circle. But you know what? It's probably maybe, maybe, maybe cir- people with taste like it. And um, all yeah. my, uh, me and, and all I'm my like friends top 40. just. Yeah. I, what I will say about it is that I usually prefer a Coachella lineup that I don't like that much. And that sounds so stupid because it's like, why would you spend all the money to go to a festival where you don't care to see people? Uh-huh. But it takes the pressure off. Like okay, you're no, not but- you're not constantly like okay. We have to be this place at this time, this place at this time. Like uh-huh. it's just like okay. Now we're just enjoying the festival. Maybe I'll see this person. Maybe I'll see this person. Yeah, I will say the best part about Coachella is the festival. Like yeah, yeah the music is fabulous, and I love seeing. Like that's one of my favorite places to watch anyone perform. But the overall like vibe and energy and seeing all of my friends and like Agreed. being in the desert and I sound like so foo foo right now and I get it. <laughs> Who cares? But you know what? It's such a blast. It is. It's so it's, fun. It is a lot of fun. And it's like, a lot, but it's fun. It is. I do like sometimes, at least last year, I was very, I left there being like, that felt like a Los Angeles like party. Like I just felt like I just True. saw all people that I already see constantly. I'm like, why did I even come to Palm Springs? It's like Instagram's asshole. <laughs> I know, but I <laughs> think I think maybe that was just like what I chose to do at Coachella, and that was probably my fault. I last year I brought my brother and then our family friend, and it was really fun. Like going like living vicariously through them because they were like, whoa, that's so-and-so standing right there. Like That is my favorite thing in the world yeah. to do is like experience something from somebody else's perspective. Somebody just told me that there's like an actual word for it. But like the feel, it's like this feeling you get like watching a movie with somebody yes, that you've already that, seen. Yeah, I wonder what that word is. I, well, someone said sonder, but I don't think that's what the actual definition of sonder. But like, like the feeling you get when like, you might not want to watch a movie You're again. You're living vicariously. But yeah. you you want to show it to someone else so that you can go like this yes. and watch them It's like watch when I send movie. my friend a TikTok, I'm like, watch it. Yes, and it's you. so exciting. Yeah. I feel like that's why people want to have kids. I feel like that's like what ha- being a parent is like. Whoa, true. Because just the whole time now they're you're like re-experiencing the world, but now you're like a- as them. But maybe that's bad. Maybe that's how you, how you end up like a way too involved parent. Well, <laughs> you know what I've been thinking about lately is I used to be like so... Oh, I cannot picture myself having kids anytime soon, right? No, I can picture myself having kids, but not anytime soon, right? Lately, I've been like, do I want kids, like, relatively soon? Not, like, in the... I'm just saying, like, in the next, like, five, you know, to ten years, I'm like, that's not a... How old are you? I'm 25. Oh, okay. So I'm like, that's not that crazy of a thing to think about. And I was, like, thinking about how awesome it would be to have mini-me's and the person I love and just like them thinking I'm the coolest person ever. Yeah. And just hang out with them. It would be really fun. Like think but about how I think in our current it. our current like lifestyle right now, it might not it might just put a pause on things. Oh, a hundred percent. But I wouldn't be like so upset if I had a baby right now. I was thinking about it, I'm like, no one would even be mad at me if I had a no. baby. Like I'm twenty six years old. I can yeah. have a baby right now. Okay, so you're twenty six. When's your birthday? November twenty sixth. November twenty sixth. Okay, I'm June twenty fifth. Oh, my God. We're, like, almost the same day. I know. Almost the same day. So why don't you like the Coachella lineup? 
Because I don't know anyone on it. Okay. Like, literally nobody. Frank Ocean. Frank Ocean's sick. I will say Bad Bunny. Like, oh, wait. Suicide Boys are going, which is, like, so random. But I love them so Hell much. Hell yes. Um, who I, else is on there? A bunch of, like, I feel like random people. Normally, I feel like the... Besides the headliners, there's, like, so many good people, too. And I felt like they were, like, okay. But, like, I don't know. Last year, there was, like, Big Sean and, like... So many other like uh, good yeah. people, but and I feel like Doja, it's, like she. Oh was, my god, yeah, she was like, to me the best set of Coachella oh god, last she was year. Amazing, like, by Megan far. the Stallion, like all those people. And this year, I'm like, eh, whatever. I don't know. Maybe I'm being. I think it's probably just different music personalities than probably. us. Because like that's like I'm sure a lot of people were like, oh my god, finally a Coachella lineup. But I do like, listen to some Blackpink. I do listen to some oh, Bad I Bunny. Love, I am so excited to see Blackpink I'm just so because they're such. To see a, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I watch Blackpink videos all day just because they're like so fascinating. Well, to they're me. such like, like boss ass bitches and just and the so dancing, cute. like yeah. everything, so anything K-pop. I'm obsessed with because they're. It's just so like. The process of like becoming 100%. a K-pop idol, like all of that, is like amazing. To it's me. one of those things where I listen to all of them. Like I listen to Bad Bunny. Like I know a few songs. Same with Blackpink, but I'm not like a ride or die stan. Yeah, like a fan of these like art, like artists as artists, maybe just their music. Yes. Whereas like Harry, I knew like almost every yeah. song last what was, year. Did you go 2000? I think 2018 was when it was like Post Malone and like yes. Oh my god. Yeah, that was a crazy lineup. What have you learned? Like. Being new to this world, what do you feel like you're good at? What do you feel like you're bad at? What do you want to get better at? I want to hear about just like you being at the work side of, you know, being a creator. Um, I'm bad at the work part. Um, <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I my problem is I, I feel like a lot of people, especially like in the influencer space, are like so good at it because they're very creative. And I'm not very creative really honestly and that surprises me it's like probably my biggest like insecurity about myself but i'm not a creative or like an artistically creative person at all so like as far as like aesthetic content or like making like good content for brands which is actually literally my job i'm i don't feel good at at all really i don't and like like i use Paige lorenz as an example a lot because she her everything she does i love is her so, me too i really love her but she does like such like Every, you watch it and you just like feel like good inside. It's like so aesthetic and she's she sets everything up right. And it's I love that. And I do not have that like a bone in my body that can do that at all. But I feel like the way that I'm creative is in like my words and stuff. So that's where like I love to do like podcasting and stuff and like making TikToks mm. where it's like just my ideas only matters like what I'm saying. OK, I see what you're saying. You're saying you're not that like aesthetic yeah i don't think i'll ever, I, I'll ever be an influencer that like people brand like clothing so brands fine. like are dying to work with because you know she's so good at that I'm, i will never be that but i would love like i feel like what i am more comfortable doing is like just talk literally just talking on tiktok mm -hmm. or like talking on a which podcast. is a skill that I, a lot of people that sometimes are very aesthetic don't have yeah i feel like it's kind of one of the other yeah but in the same way like i don't have um like, I don't have, like, the b ability to choose an outfit on my own. Like, I have to see an outfit that, like, I like and then somehow co copy it. No, I'm like, fine. I cop like It's an outfit inspo. Just that's, like, the way my brain works that way. So that side of creating, I'm not very good at. But I do, I try. Well, that's what's so cool about being a creator, though, is, like, there really is room at for room for everyone at the table yeah. because you don't have to be the most aesthetic person and you don't have to be the funniest you know, most personable person either. Like you can really niche down on what you're good at, which right. in your case is talking to camera. Like you would think, oh, it's just talking to camera, but that is such a skill well, it's, I that try. people wish they had. And I don't even know if I'm good at that. It's just me being more comfortable doing that. Like that's uh -huh. what I feel most comfortable doing. So like if I could make a whole social media career off of only doing that and never taking another like, like photo for a brand, yeah, I would love it. Well, I think also because you're a female, like guys would never say what you're saying right now because guys really aren't like aesthetic. Yeah, right? I guess so. And like, like the they're, yeah, yeah, you're right. they would be like, oh, he's so good at t talking to camera. That would yeah. be like what. But like girls, because they're like so creative and or a lot of girls, you know, have that creative aesthetic eye. And like we see it as like the Pinterest Instagrammers. Yeah. We think that, oh, you're like just because I have a podcast, like doesn't mean I'm. I don't know. I feel like you, you. I'm not. You're not seeing your, the strength behind your skill. Well, I'm trying. I, it's not that I like think I'm horrible at it. It's yeah. just like that's not what like excites me. I don't. 
I get no satisfaction from that at all. Whereas I know other people Which do. Is so like fun. It, it scratches an itch for them. They make it makes them feel good. If I have to take a photo for like a clothing brand, that's like a drag to me. Whereas if I have to make a YouTube video, like got it, I, is fun. Yeah. Which by the way, I do love your vlogs. You do. Yeah. Yay. They're really good. I feel like you are. I miss like having YouTubers to watch that just like simply talk to camera and like mm-hmm. are showing me their life. Because I feel like YouTube, um, people aren't just uploading as much anymore. At all. I don't. I have like only a few people that I watch on YouTube, but mm-hmm. it's like I've, I grew up on YouTube. Like I was obsessed YouTube with YouTube. YouTube is my favorite platform. Me too. And it's my favorite one to do too. So Same. it's like, it's the only thing that like really excites me. And I get excited to sit and edit a video, even it, like, even if I'm not making money from it, I don't care. It's like actually fun for me. But like nobody hardly is doing it anymore. So I'm like rewatching Emma all day long. Like, <laughs> Emma, come back. Emma, please. Even like that prime old Emma where she was just like doing her own little challenges or like, I'm talking obsessed to camera. With her. And she, girl, I'm paying, I'm keeping her lights on right now. I'm, I, I, it's just constantly on a loop because my cat loves her. Wait, I really my should cat go back. Yeah, you have a new cat. I do. I just got a kitten. So I'm a mother. So cute. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's your cat's name? Her name is Murphy. Like, have you seen Interstellar? I I have. It's so good. Yeah. Wait, is that the one where they go to space? Yeah. yeah. And like, yeah, it's really it's like sad. Three hours. Actually, I just watched. Yeah, I watched it yeah. the other day because I made my friend watch it because it was like you have to understand why I named her Murphy, <laughs> but. She's so cute, and I adopted her. And her personality, her little description said that she had the personality of Dolly Parton. So that's why. Shut I got up. Her. Literally, why I got her because I'm obsessed with Dolly Parton. Oh my gosh, Dolly Parton is so iconic. I literally am wearing the Buxom lip shade that's named Called Dolly. Dolly. Oh, I love her. Love her so much. What do you feel like are some goals you're setting for the year? Um, definitely, I feel like I want to be more active on YouTube because, like I said, it is my favorite thing to do. But I'm. I feel like because I haven't been doing as much or like in the past few months at least hadn't been doing as much. It was like I didn't have as much to film. So that's kind of like the reason behind like me wanting to say yes to everything so that I constantly have something to record and Mm -hmm. something like something to post. You know what I mean? Because that's the easiest thing in the world is just have fun, record it, post it. Wait, we should do a video together. I would Would love to. Would you ever be down? Absolutely. We could do like a... Like a credit card swap or like a house swap. Oh my God, we should should do like one of the old school like YouTube like challenges. That'd be fun. It would be so fun. And I am like, I I love YouTube. So I'm trying to be more active at least like a video a week, which is so funny. I said that to like, I think like Remy or something the other day. And she's like, like, you know, she did like vlog miss like 30 vlogs in a row. (laughs) And she's like active. Like that's not really that active. (laughs) Remy knocks out the vlogs like crazy. She's amazing. And I'm obsessed. My cat loves her too. But I, so I want to be more active in that. And like, obviously TikTok, I feel like I'm kind of just veering away from Instagram and Instagram just does not interest me anymore or really anyone. And I've gotten vibes from some of these people where I'm like, I like I don't know and then it changes how I view their content from that point forward like every time they post something after that I'm like that is not who that person is like it it isn't yeah and so I think the thing with Teffy was like I just I think she's even more amazing in person she's just amazing oh my gosh I love her I'm like Teffy we stand Teffy (laughs) and Devin and Alex we love them all um what about people that inspire you like it could be people that aren't creators or you know just family members or people in your life or friends who inspires um, you? What gets you going? I'm like, Teffy again. Yeah. Um, I feel like Tana I look up to a lot just because she's like such, I'm obviously so close with her. So I see, even though it seems like she's like lazy and kind of blows things off, which she does for sure. Um, she's also very like, oh, she's Tana just very is, business oriented and she knows. She knows what the, she's, she's doing. She knows exactly oh what she's gosh. doing constantly. So that's like, I look up to her a lot. I look up to her a ton. Yeah, I don't even know her. I, I think do. I, I met her at People's Choice for like five seconds. Yeah, she's like, she's really, it's helpful for me to be around her because it's like, even when it feels like she's doing, she's always doing something. Mm-hmm. Like, and I don't know, I feel like. Like even the branding behind Canceled is is fabulous. Yeah, the she's. intro, she's, the. Sometimes everything. I'll like, I'll catch myself like, I'll be like, oh my God, this girl has millions of dollars and she's, you know, still in bed at 8 p.m. and with hot <laughs> Cheetos on her pillow. But then I like see her sit down to edit a video and I'm like, oh my God, like she's amazing. She's slaying, yeah. So she, yeah, she inspires me a lot. Um, I feel like also, this is not for everyone, but a lot of successful people kind of do have a non-traditional routine and just outlook on life. Like they're like, you know what, if that means you have to stay in at 
till 3 p.m. eating hot Cheetos or whatever the case is. Like sometimes people are like that. Yeah, and, and it's clearly for worked for yeah, her. So and it it's works like, for people. Whatever. Doesn't saw, mean it'll work for everyone else, but. Yeah, I saw someone post something the other day about like um, how people brag about like waking up at 5 a.m. and it's like they get their day started and they're so much more successful, but it's like, okay, but you bet, went to bed at 8 p.m. So it's yeah. like, what really is the difference? True. Like, I, so I don't know. That kind of applies there, but. I don't know. Who do you look up to? I'm trying to think of more people. Obviously, I look up to like Alicia and Remy. Oh, because, of course. But they're so close to home. Like I try and think of even oh, one of my favorite people ever is Reese Witherspoon. Oh, I love her. I love her to death. Also, OK, that on that note, Drew Barrymore. Oh, my God. Love. I, I would do anything for Drew. Like I have a, a weird thing about her where it's like I literally think I love her more than any of my friends or family <laughs> or anybody like when I see a video of her, it doesn't matter if she's literally making pork chops. I will sob. Like she's there's something amazing. about her, like energy and presence. I'm, I just love her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say with in regards to Alicia and Remy, they have really, especially Alicia, have really taken me under their wing and, you know, really shown me the nitty gritty mm-hmm. of, like, how to be successful in this world and you know what steps I need to take as far as like you know, how to deal with my finances or what direction. They really have pointed me in a lot of the right direction. Okay. And I need that Across then. areas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, and I've, I'm really grateful for that. And, um, oh gosh, there's so many people that inspire me. I mean, I, I am a huge fan of Devin. I love her to death. Yeah, she's um, great. She's fabulous. Um, honestly, my parents, I feel really grateful to like look up to in certain areas. I think like my mom has a really positive outlook on life. And like the other day she just texted me like the coolest thing. Um, I was like talking to her about cause I was like stressed out talking to my financial advisor and she was like, that's great or whatever. I was like telling her some number stuff and she was like, that's great. But just remember like money isn't everything. Like, yeah. Don't. She was like, "Don't go crazy trying to make too much money. Like it isn't everything." And I was just like, "Like, thank you. I just needed to hear that. Like, I, yeah. I felt really grateful in that moment to like have someone with such a positive, um, and strong outlook on life that I was like, oh my gosh, I, I needed to hear that, and I trust your opinion. It right is now. important to re- remember that too. Like, especially because, especially for someone who stresses a lot about money, I've always like that's been my number one stressor. I think as long as I could remember mm-hmm. for some reason. And I'm just getting a lot of anxiety about it. It's so stressful. It yeah. is, but then, like, th- certain things would happen. My grandpa's kind of, like, similar to what you're saying about your mom. Is like, like, for example, if I, you know, like, crash my car or something, I'd call him sobbing, sobbing, sobbing my eyes mm-hmm. out. And, like, he'd be like, Brooke, it's just a car. Like, yeah. it's just a car. Or, like, it's just money. Like, it's it all, it'll always come back. It's not that serious. Like Totally. And, and it means so me much when it's someone like grandpa yeah. or my mom or whoever when you're like I genuinely trust you because mm-hmm. like anyone can say oh it's just money but when it's someone that like hits us hits a chord yeah inside you that's when it, I, I'm really like grateful or that's when you need to hear it from someone like that yeah do you have any new year's resolutions I I do I have one of them or my main one really being um kind of what you were saying like how um Alicia and Remy help you with like the nitty gritty. I feel like nobody, nobody like knows I said, what you know. yeah. And I just recently, like I said, like got managed. I didn't have any management at all, and I didn't have really anybody in my corner. Obviously, my family has no experience with what like we do at all, and so like I have no concept of like managing my money or like what I should be doing, how I should be saving, how much I should be saving, spending on whatever. So like, I really want to get on top of that a little bit because I'm not doing a good job (laughs) and so that's my main one and then just get in shape because I literally tried to do I I did like a 10 minute YouTube workout the other day and I'm not (laughs) kidding I couldn't move for days they're no joke no but like I'm I've never been out of shape like that I was like an athlete like I felt like I what did you what sports did you play okay so I wasn't an athlete (laughs) I was like I literally I was a a dancer growing up but no that's yeah that's an athlete but, but like I always was in shape and I was obsessed with working out dancers are so in shape yeah yeah so i was like so i just never have gotten to this point where i like actually can't i if i try to do runyon right now i think i would die and like (laughs) it's a hike brooke like okay so new year's resolutions are getting back into strength like getting your strength and health in check managing my money better and hopefully having like the podcast be like my number one priority because i canceled was my favorite thing like literally ever and when it ended i was like 
heartbroken. So I feel like that is, I just want to get that going again and have that be like my focus of the year. Uh huh. And what are the steps? Like, why hasn't it started? It's just a lot. Like, everyone, that's really honest to God. Everybody's been messaging me for literally six months straight, being like, come on, just start a new one. And it's like, there's so much, I'm sure you know, that goes into like the, back end of a podcast Mm -hmm. like people have to produce it you have to have a studio like and it's contracts and stuff especially with someone who's like as big as tana it's harder like for me i'm like i'll sign with anyone like (laughs) but it's it she there's a lot of negotiations and like behind the scenes stuff that has to happen before it can even start and then after that you have to pick Mm. a studio or build a studio and like it's just a lot and so we're the ball's rolling it's coming what is your thought process when you're coming up with short form content Oh, I, the problem is I don't have oh, a thought have. process at all. I'll post anything. I'll like just talk. Half, more than half of my TikToks I delete. Almost. Wait, really? Oh, yeah. Why? Because I like, I just say, I'm just saying anything and then I'll watch it back and I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> literally, what are you talking about? And so I'll delete it. Wait, but, really? Or I'll put it, I won't delete it, but I'll put it on my eyes only. So you literally have zero thought process and you just upload? No, because if I put, the, I mean, at least now, like, for example, I posted a video yesterday that was like, I put effort into it. I had lighting. It was like there was like production quality there and it tanked. Wait, but then I'll really? but then I'll do one where I just talk and it's like it does so well. So I feel like that's just at this point I've just dug myself in in there and I don't, <laughs> I can't get out. All, well, that's the beauty of TikTok is like anyone can do it cuz it's just it's you don't have to have any production. Yeah, at all. That's a bit my favorite thing about it cuz if I were somebody who had to like Set again so much respect to those creators especially like makeup girls and stuff who like yeah who really the lighting is there insane. has to be so much work like put into it i, I have so much respect for those people because it it's hard what about on tiktok are you like oh i need to post once a day or is it literally random? i'll post 20 times a day or oh. sometimes i'll go three weeks without posting okay. i literally it's horrible so you're just flying by the city of your yeah, because tiktok's just fun it is fun yeah it's it's good not to take like at least one or two platforms as seriously sometimes mm-hmm. i agree for the mental <laughs> Anyway, well, Brooke, it's been an absolute blast chatting Yay, with you. Yay, that, so, that was so quick. Flew by. Um, well, where can everyone follow you and, I guess, maybe promote your future new podcast? Yeah, so Brooke and Becca will have a podcast soon. Tana and Brooke will have a podcast soon. But I would love it. Honestly, I really care the most about my YouTube channel. So I'm like, please follow Go or subscribe. subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's my favorite thing ever. And maybe we'll do a little collabby. Yes, please. Same. I would love to do that. Okay, we should really get I'm to down. Talk in. So um, maybe you guys comment down below what you guys want to see us do on YouTube because that would be super fun because this is living on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to Brooke and all of her future endeavors and then also subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to make someone's day this week. I love you guys. Bye. Bye.